Hello and welcome to another OBS tutorial video. Today we're going to talk about how to make your audio sound really good for all of your videos and live streams using VST2 plugins, Virtual Studio Technology. It's completely free and it's really going to make you sound good. So let's get started. One of the things that you should know about any live stream or video recording is that audio is king. We need to make sure your audio sounds good so that your message can be sent clearly. And depending on whether you have intro videos or video from a different source, you wanna make sure that everything is matched and level. So let's go ahead and take a look at what this looks like inside OBS. Okay, so first of all, the very first thing you wanna do is take a look at your sound control panel and this would be different if you're using a Mac, but I want to open this up because this is just in the default Windows recording settings. You can find this by searching for sound control panel. And this is where OBS takes the audio from. So right here, this is where it's going to come right through. And we're that's because we're going to select our default. So this is our default. If we want to set another one, we could change another one as a default. Like we could set that as a default. But our default microphone is this microphone array here. It'll be different for every person. We're going to go into properties really quickly, and we're going to look at the levels. And one of the things you can do is you can just look at the levels here. Let's see. I'll move it over here. See those levels right there that are turning green? That's what we keep an eye on. And what we want to do is make sure that it never hits the top. It never peaks. But it's still getting a nice, clean audio signal. So here you can see it's peaking just a tiny bit. So we don't ever want it to really peak. And I have a microphone boost of 30 dB. So I'm going to turn it down a little bit. And I'm going to turn the microphone array so that I'm getting a consistently good level, but I'm not peaking at any time. So that's looking pretty good right there. I actually do like the 30 boost. And then I'm just going to go down to like 78 or so, so I don't ever really, really clip. So that's getting a pretty good signal there. It's going to generate a little bit of noise with that, with that microphone boost. So it depends on what you want to do. Maybe I'll do better with a with a full uh, microphone array on and only a 20 dB boost. But I'm, see, I'm not getting the signal I need there. So I'm going to have to go with a 30 dB boost and I'm going to go down to like 75 so I don't peak. I'm going to click OK. So that's just default inside Windows. How do we get it to going there? And now let's take a look at this audio source, which I actually have uh, added. And I'll show you how to add an audio source as well into, I think it's this one, right, let's see, where is it? Let's add it right here. So see this microphone input? This is my Realtek microphone audio array right there. So I've got it in just one of my sources. If you want it to be in all of your sources, you can simply go to, and I'll show you how to do this. Let's make sure the base scene is on. And then you'll see that that adds to my mixer there, and I'm getting my levels there. A um, little bit too hot, so let's go. We'll go back and just fix that. But let's go to File Settings, and I want to show you just how to make a uh, one of your microphones the default microphone in audio. You can see here that we have all of these different audio sources here, and you can see that my desktop audio device is default, and you can choose whichever one you want that to be. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and click filters. Now the filters here, this is how, and let me just make this a little smaller so it's easier for you guys to see. The filters are how we're going to start enhancing the audio that we have. And we're going to start with what's called noise suppression. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull this up so that I can have a good view. In fact, I can even pop out. We can pop out this audio mixer. So I can put the audio mixer over here maybe, just as a pop out, so I can keep my eye on all of my audio sources. And then I'll go in here into filters. I'll just resize this again, sorry. And then I'll be able to look at them side by side as we make our changes. Okay, cool. So I've got my filters and I've got my mixer right next to each other so I can see what I'm doing here. Now, noise suppression is really important and you don't want to use too much of it. But what noise suppression will do is it'll get you a good clean signal. 
and it, you, sh you can get it all the way up to maybe like, you know, depending on how noisy your microphone is, we have that 30 dB of microphone boost, so we are going to get some noise from that, but you want to use as little noise suppression as possible to make sure that we're just kind of reducing the noise that's coming through. So, you know, I'm basically going to have it roughly at like roughly, uh, you know, negative 20. You're going to want to do some testing here. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a gate. And let me show you how we did that. So I have already installed a free pack of tools, which I'm going to put the link below. But these are VST2 plugins from Reaper.fm. And these are completely free. And it includes a compressor. Um, a noise gate. It has a whole bunch of tools here. This is a compressor I'll show you how to use. Um, we have a whole bunch of great stuff. There's a delay if you need it. That's more for like guitars and stuff. There's an advanced EQ, which I'll show you guys how to use. Really basic audio stuff that I will try to, if you know nothing, don't worry. It's not going to be too big of a deal. There's a gate, a low pass and a high pass. And we'll show you how to put all of these in in a chain. Now keep in mind, these audio filters do work in a chain. So it'll suppress the noise first. That's the first thing we want to do. And then we want to add our gate. So hit the plus button. And now keep in mind, OBS has a basic noise gate. But I'm going to click the VST2 plugin. Now, this is a noise gate with VST. And I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to select the Regate standalone plugin and open it up. Now, as you can see here, it's coming in, it's getting our levels. And what we want to do is we actually want to be quiet for just one second. And we want to look at that gate and we want to see where is noise happening that we could get rid of simply by putting a gate on it. And I'll explain it in a second, but let me just be quiet so we can listen to the noise. Okay, you see that? Right around there is the noise of the room without me talking. That is where we want our gate to go. So what happens is, is that you raise the gate so that at that point, there will basically, it will mic the, it will mute the microphone automatically. So if you're not talking, there's no background noise. See that? It's the perfect level. You put it right there. And then what happens is that the, even though there is noise in the room, over here in our microphone, it's muted. So it's a great way to enhance your audio when you're not talking. So that, and ideally, so that you don't hear like the breaths, like the <gasps> that kind of stuff in between your audio recordings and your live streams. So let's just look at it one more time here. Perfect. That's exactly what we want. So now that is how it works. Uh, I believe and I, I really think that a, a, a longer attack and release is, is, is good to have. And basically that just makes it sound a little bit more uh, natural. The release is when it like kind of the length of time that it releases the microphone gating. And then a low pass and a high pass is something to consider adding as well. We will also do that in the EQ. So I don't see any real reason to do too much with it. But it's not a bad idea to handle it up front. And again, it's all done in a chain. So to do a minor high pass here is not a bad idea. A high pass essentially cuts out a lot of low level noise. Anything in a, a spectrum below 80 hertz is below the sound of the human voice. So therefore, and we'll look at this more detailed in the EQ, anything under 80 hertz is just rumbling noise of like a computer or some low hum of a bass that we just don't need. On the high pass side, generally, you know, it depends on people's different voices, but I'm just going to put 1700 here. My voice is a male voice. It doesn't get up to the really high pitched vo uh, levels. So anything above Really, I mean, I'm going to put actually 1500 here. It's just a high level noise from something buzzing in the room. And it, there's no need to have it because we're talking about voices here. Now, um, you can see dry and noise and wet is all set to like kind of the defaults. And we're going to leave it there. Um, the most important thing is that I've kind of brought the release up to, you know, roughly like 250, 200, 220 is fine. Uh, that'll make it sound a little bit smoother. Okay. 
Now that that is done, let's go ahead and take a look at our next plugin that we're going to use, which is AEQ. And it is important, the chain in which we do these, and I'll talk about it a little bit more. So VST2, EQ. All right. Now, let's go ahead and switch back to my base scene here. There we go. All right, so we're going to go ahead and add the EQ. So we just simply do our uh, the EQ there, the standalone EQ. And now we're going to EQ. And now you can see here all of these, uh, you know, audio levels jumping up and down as I talk. And as you can see that not a whole lot's happening above like 10K, as I mentioned. You can see here that there's some lower end rumbling, but that's the sound of my voice right there coming through my microphone. So what we want to do is enhance the voice. And this is something that it's a little bit different for everybody. But um, now that we've done it, we can kind of remove where we don't, what we don't need and enhance the voice to, to what we do use. So let's go ahead and just take a little bit off of the low end here. Okay. Because we really don't need it. Um, like, you know, we talked about that. You got this low shelf here not needed and we're just going to have it come down in a little bit of a curve like this and that's going to could possibly reduce reduce some of the boom in my voice but it'll make it more intelligible and then on this side now this is different for every single person depending on what you want your voice to sound like this is going to add a little bit of clarity and i'm going to add just a little bit here as well okay now listening to my audio I can see here that it's looking pretty good and um, you know I'm liking what I'm seeing. So let's go ahead and keep that the way it is. I'll add a little bit of gain here which will just that's just going to uh, increase everything there. And you just got to do this for each person and it does take a lot of time here but uh, this is something that you it's a four band so we've got our low shelf so that's how we kind of get rid of some of those lower end frequencies that don't have anything to do with my voice too much. We've got this band, which is more about the boominess of my voice. And then in between 200 to 500, this is where, you know, we're talking about kind of like the main kind of nasaliness of the voice. And then up here, this is where those high end notes, the, tss, the, the things that make it really uh, more clear up here. So it's different for every person. So just remember that. Okay. Boom. There's our EQ and noise gate um you know what actually all right perfect now let's add our final one which is going to be our compression and the compression is really important and i'll explain why which is a compressor here so the compressor is really important this is the, the built-in compressor, um, which you could use if you want to, but we are going to use the VST2 compressor. Just gives a little bit more functionality. All right. Let's choose our standalone compressor here. All right, so here's our compressor. Now, what compressors do is it, re it pushes down on that EQ and really makes it so that you can't peak as much, which is good because I can see that we are, we are peaking. Um, so we want to, we've probably got to work on our gain structure. So you can see over here, this is a really great view. We can see that we're peaking. So we've actually added a little bit too much to, before we go too much further, let's make sure, let's remove that boost from our audio, which is good because before, you know, we had to add all this boost to get a good, decent sound out of our microphone. And now it's just, it's too much. So it's, it's peaking already. So let's go into our levels and finally get rid of that 20 dB. There we go. Let's do something like that. Because We don't want to peak. There we go. Now we're looking a lot better. And this, I'm not using the highest quality microphone here for our test either. But um, it is still important to... It's really more for like a technical setup here. All right. So now let's go into our microphone. 
and I can see it's getting better levels already. Let's go into our filters. There we go. Let me just slide this up a hair. All right, and obviously there's gonna be a lot of testing that goes on. So you're gonna test this a few times, make some recordings, then you're gonna to get to the live stream. No, no uh, sense uh, embarrassing yourself on a live stream uh, until you have, you know, you've done some good recordings and you know what you're doing. All right, so we're still, you know, basically peaking a little bit here, right? We don't wanna go all the way up to that level. So what we can do is we can add our compression settings. Now I'm going to take the attack to about five milliseconds. It's just going to make it a little smoother. And I'm going to reduce the release a little bit so that we make it nice and smooth. And my ratio is going to go 10 to one. And what that does is it pushes down and makes it so that, you know, we're really uh, compressing it so that it really makes it, your voice sound more, you just, you have to listen to it. It's hard to explain, but it, it, it could get to the point where if you're compressing it too much, that you sound like really radio and like almost like you're on a megaphone. But if you're, if you're using it the right amount, it should make your voice just a lot more clear and kind of cut through, um, you know, on, on people's uh, headsets and microphones. Now I'm going to take the threshold down quite a bit here. I'm going to take the threshold down to about uh, 22. And now look at that. Now we're not um, peaking at all. Isn't that great? Look at what we just did. So the threshold is basically like our maximum level that we want, uh, you know, the compression to start at. So now we're really doing good here. We've barely got um, any peaking. And if you could hear the audio, you would know, and you just do a lot of testing here that it's really compressing it down nicely. So let's just take the wetness up just a hair. I've noticed that helps. And the rest of this is essentially up to you guys to play with, see what you can do, but this will make it so that you never peak and you're really filling up that nice level of, of um, audio, which is what you want. So those are the tools that you're going to want to use in that order. Noise suppression, noise gate, EQ, and compressor. Uh, we have actually a really good course on how all this works that you can take on Udemy, which goes over uh, how to set up a podcast, which really features a lot of the uh, EQing and things of that nature. But hopefully that will help you get your OBS audio all up and running the way that you want it. Uh, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. I got a whole bunch more tutorials for you guys. And uh, I can't wait to connect with you guys more. Take care, everybody. Bye.